as you may know, bro, I've been doing this for a hot minute now, and it's been a, a series of engaging people who I've been inspired by, work with, connected with. And in a nutshell, we talk slop, AKA shit. We dive right down deep into it. There's no structure, no format. This is the closest we're gonna to get to it, you know, um, as far as how I open up the space. And, um, you know, you're, you've been a key player in my life as far as physically now, you know, we got to connect and so forth. But prior to that, just, you know, the works, you know, family lineage you know and so forth so i want to get into some of that but as you know i'm coming from a mushroom aka you know psilocybin psychedelic premise i'd love to delve in there i've been seeing oh, some of your posts recently looking into the mycelium and breaking it down like, oh shit like the bro was going in and um you can go in on so many levels so many angles i don't even know where we're, where we're going to end up today <laughs> but, <laughs> but let's start with at least you bro just introducing yourself who you are what you do, and then I'll just you back off that and we can start getting things going, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so KT, the arch degree. Um, I have very uh, humble beginnings <laughs> in, re in respect to where I am now. Currently, um, I'm an ethnobotanist, um, so I deal with plants and their relationship to people and culture. Um, I, I deal with music, you know, I'm an MC. Um, I, I'm a nutritionist because I help people with their food regimens and um, I'm very interested in the body um, and forgotten uh, technologies and sciences and how they all kind of mingle. Um, the, the, what set me on this path was the fact that I was born into it, so to speak, because my mother um, moved back home to St. Croix to, uh, you know, our, our bloodline and our heritage that comes from the Caribbean. And in moving back, um, she got connected with Dr. Sabi, and this was before he was Dr. Sabi, you know, mm -hmm. um, and in meeting him and finding out the knowledge that he had that she hadn't heard before, it was something she had been looking for and ended up becoming an apprentice and then subsequently ended up becoming uh, one of his wives as well, because, you know, he was into polygamy and, and multiple wives. So in that, um, my mother met him when she was pregnant with me. So I was born into this kind of new thought, new world and new study that my mother was under. And um, Sadie took me in as a son and taught me such and uh, raised me and instilled principles in me. So as I got older, um, him as long as with other mentors, they kind of kept me on a path of the body and health and speaking out and um, alternative thinking and critical thinking and deep thought and just how powerful the mind and the body is. And um, it just led to a point where I found out that that was like what I was going to be dealing with, you know. Um, I also started getting into movies because of my grandmother. Um, she started taking me to films. And in that, I started seeing there was a lot of messages um, inside of the films, inherent in the films. Mm -hmm. which I already learned in reading uh, books. Because when you're in school, you, 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 you do book reports and things and the teacher's always asking you, okay, no, no. What was the meaning of the book? What was the essence? What was the symbolism? So I started applying that to films and um, doing what we know now as decoding. Mm -hmm. um, and then between my health information and my decoding information, mm -hmm. this is what had me cross paths with Baba Kalindi who um, I had no idea even knew who I was. <laughs> you know, I've been following him and, and looking at him for some time at that point. I think when we met, it had been, had to be maybe 10 years um, or just under 10 years. I've been really kind of listening um, to his information. And uh, he reached out to me and told me he, was, he liked what I was doing and then invited me to his first conference, which I think that's the shirt you're wearing right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, and then that's what really kind of took me to the next level. Um, what I left out about Savy was something very dynamic that he did for me as a baby and my mother did, was they introduced me to mushrooms and psilocybin um, when I was a baby. Um, I was getting it in the womb because my mother was eating the mushrooms during the pregnancy. Um, I was fed it in the milk because she was eating it when I when she was breastfeeding. And then when I was around maybe 10, 11 months old, Sabi actually gave me my first mushroom. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it was ironically due to the fact that they were on this soy trip. They didn't know the harm, the harmful effects of soy yet. I'm, I can actually take credit as the reason why Dr. Sabi flipped his script on soy and told people to leave soy alone and did the research on it. Um, Cause we was all eating it and I was getting stopped up. I got constipated and we would do a lot of uh, plane flights in the, in the Caribbean to get to his different lectures and different uh, people he was, he was helping. And I would go along as a child. And one time I, um, I got constipated and I was just hollering and screaming and um, he gave me a mushroom and it got everything up out of me, but I, I know I had me a trip <laughs> on my trip. You know what I'm saying? Um, he gave me more when I was around five. Um, and then I continued to take them as I got older. So, you know, I'm at this point now because of, you know, how I was set up in the beginning and a kind of a narrow path that I was kept on based upon a lot of uh, adult influences to this point. But that's who I am. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the future already here, man. You're the babies that cleaned it. You know, the mushroom babies, man, of the future. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. so I'm already that's here, man. So, <laughs> yeah, bro, because you, you, now you're killing it, man. And there's so much that just comes from the intro. But um, simply because you brought up the whole, um, you know, being initiated into, you know, the usage of psilocybin pre-birth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I often get asked a lot on my, you know, on my journey, you know, the safety and what do I know about that? And I'm like, well, I know as much as what I've been taught by people like Mama Ayana, you know, Mr. Omalewa, people within my circle that have gone through that process. But I've not, you know, I've not witnessed until I went to Detroit some of these mushroom babies and stuff, you know, that have come through that process. So can you touch on that? It just simply is like the safety. One big thing, I've got a lot of sisters now we're in that space where they're like, you know, I'm conscious of the mushrooms and I'm pregnant and how safe is it, you know, what do I do, how do I do it kind of thing. So is there anything you could share on that? Right. So, I mean, of course, um, as, as Baba Kalindi spoke, uh, the LD50 of, of uh, psilocybin is extremely high. Um, when you're talking LD50, it's when you um, tr pretty much are finding out the toxicity of some type of substance. Um, and I believe he said, you know, you would have to eat your weight in mushrooms for it to get to, I guess, what you would consider toxic level. So if you're 150 pounds, you would have to take 150 pounds of psilocybin where, and psilocybin, we talking grains, ain't nobody taking no pound <laughs> of psilocybin anyway, not even one pound let alone an ounce at one time. You see what I'm saying? Which is what, like 28 grand? Well, no, yeah, he was he was taking an ounce. He was taking about two ounces, technically. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we're, I think when, when it comes to children, it's more along the lines of microdosing. You know, so you don't have to necessarily take a heroic dose, uh, five grams or better, so to speak, um, during your pregnancy and during birth. Matter of fact, during birth, mushrooms or not, you're, you as well as a child are going to uh, have an influx of DMT anyway. You have an influx of DMT during birth and you have one at death. That's why when you take um, a certain amount of shrooms, you kind of get that old school feeling. <laughs> you're like, is this what I'm going to feel like when I'm about to die or something? Because it's kind of this, everything is so serious. So <laughs> serious, a serious vibe. It's a Ooh, I'm in trouble vibe. You know what I mean? But I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I would suggest microdosing. And I believe um, when you microdose, you know, it's, it's anything between like a 0. 0.005 grams up to a gram, you know, and, you know, that's something you don't even have to do every day. Um, when you do small increments like that, um, what you're doing is you're, you're still rewiring your brain. You're still creating antioxidant uh, pathways in your body to get rid of harmful free radicals, um, you are um, establishing a certain order in your microbiome because usually when we think about psilocybin, we, we talk about its effects on the brain, but we don't talk about the real brain. The fact that you have to go through an opening of the mouth ceremony in order to have a trip in the first place. It's by way of the stomach that we have these experiences. It's not like we snort psilocybin, you know, we don't inhale psilocybin vapor. <clears throat> no, we literally have to eat it. And, and the reason why it's so effective is because 90% of all our serotonin receptors are in the gut. That's where they all at. 
And then you have the vagus nerve, which connects the gut to the brain. So whatever influences our gut influences our thinking and our thought. And I think that the brain is really something that happens secondhand. Um, because, you know, you've taken your trips before, too. I know you notice all that goes on in your stomach when you eat them shrooms. You're <laughs> hearing all types of stuff happening down there. It's like, True. you know, your stomach's, your, your intestines is like, this is what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> you stuff me with all that food all the yeah, time. Yeah. I got to, like, get rid of all this waste. But this is what I'm here. I was born for this. Yeah, I looked down. I'm like, I didn't know you existed, man. Shit, like. <laughs> Come on. You know what I mean? That thing started talking to you. And then it, yeah. it, it uh, and, and it's funny because when I was younger, I was told um, and I found through certain sources that, you know, we have a spine and that our intestines is really our frontal spine and that it enables us to fly. It's a flight mechanism. And I used to be tripping over that. I used to be like, wow, flight mechanism. Like we just <laughs> to like take off now. <clears throat> I haven't gotten any further in that, you know, <laughs> researching in that, but I can understand it figuratively in respect to the psilocybin because there's nowhere you you cannot go when you take a trip. A trip, and there's different type of magic mushrooms. There are some magic mushrooms, especially the ones in Honduras that Sabi used to use, where you will actually leave your body and you can Google Earth for your, your spirit. <laughs> wherever you want to go you know what i'm saying you want to go to africa australia you will go there you will land you will be there in real time you can call your friend and be like yo like you i come see you and be like man i saw you making that peanut butter jelly sandwich 15 okay. minutes ago you you're know? on your way yeah but um just not to get off topic but i i, I mean i would suggest definitely um micro dosing um during the uh the period of, of pregnancy through those trimesters, <clears throat> my mother was eating them fresh. And, you know, a fresh psilocybin uh, per gram versus dry, you're going to get more with the dry. Just like if you get a powdered substance, an ounce of a powdered substance is going to have more than an ounce of um, a fresh substance because you're talking about the water being removed and, you know, it's concentrated. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> But that's not to say that dry is better because um, the sister, um, uh, what's her name? Akasha, what's, what's the sister's name that spoke at the, uh, the conference this year? Um, <clears throat> she, um, she spoke on the crystal ball. She had a real powerful presentation. I know you came in on the- Via the um, Zoom, yeah. On the Via the Zoom, but you know the sister, I think her name is Akasha. I believe that's her name, but if not, then, you know, I'll let you know. I know you could put it in the description and everything, but she spoke um, this past uh, conference about how we're doing ourselves a disservice eating the dry, not to knock it, not to say to stop, but there's way that we're missing a lot, not having it fresh because the fresh comes directly from that environment. The fresh comes from that uh, particular network of mycelium. The water inside that mushroom at the time, it being fresh, there's going to be other water-soluble vitamins and constituents mm -hmm. in that mushroom that mm -hmm. we're missing out on when I'm they're dry. You. you see? So she was speaking on that. So my mother was eating them straight from the cows because they got a lot of you know cows and everything on the island and patches and stuff. So she was getting them up in the rainforest up in the mountains, eating them things fresh. I never asked her how often. It was never no daily thing. It might not even be weekly. It might have been once or twice a month, you know, she pop a little cap or chew on a stem. You know, she wasn't taking no 20, 30 grams at a time. Mm -hmm. No, she just, it was just part of her diet. She would have it every every now and again. Like I guess most people would drink wine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was her wine. <laughs> um so right I in the would wine. Say, mm -hmm. Microdose, just small because it's it's not toxic. It's not gonna hurt, you know. I'm not no doctor, you know, and we're not, you know, the, proclaiming any cures or giving any medical advice. This is all, you know, educational purposes, entertainment, and things of that nature. So you take it with a grain of salt, you do your research, and then you apply with your discretion. You know, that's my disclaimer. But with that wow. being said, 
um, yeah, the small, small amounts. It's a food. Like it's going to feed your soul. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. and the baby, um, remember you're, you're, you're creating life at the time. You're being an architect at the time. You, you're building a cardiovascular system, a nervous system, an immune, all these things. And the psilocybin is going to assist in not only the development of all of these bodies, but how efficient these bodies are going to operate. You can have a car, but you can have a car that runs well. Yeah, there's a difference. 